<laughs> Good evening, kiddo. <sighs> it's me, old buddy says here to read you a bedtime story on Tori's request. So I got a couple here. I got a bunny. I got a rabbit over the hill. I got oh. You got a story in mind for me, huh? Hmm. This is one of those urban fantasy books on download, isn't it? Hmm. You sure this is one of the PG ones? I don't want to give you nightmares. Okay. All right, kiddo. I'll read you the first chapter. It's a bedtime story. <laughs> Just sit down. <clears throat> it's a little dark in here, so forgive me if I stutter. <clears throat> the Lost Hero, Chapter 1 Jason. Even before he got electrocuted, Jason was having a rotten day. You're sure this is PG? Alright. He woke up on the back seat of a school bus, not sure where he was, holding hands with a girl he didn't know. That was necess- That- I told you it's stuck in here. That wasn't necessarily the rotten part. The girl was cute, but he couldn't figure out who she was or what she was doing here. He sat up and rubbed his eyes, trying to think. A few dozen kids sprawled in the seats in front of him, listening to iPods, talking, and sleeping. They all looked around his age, 15? 16? Okay, that was scary. He didn't know his own age. So on this first page we have some amnesiac on the school bus. He's apparently gonna get electrocuted. How fun. Um, the bus rumbled along a bumpy road. Out the windows, desert rolled by, and under the bright blue sky. Under a bright blue sky. <sighs> Who wrote this? Jason was pretty sure he didn't live in the desert. He tried to think back the last thing he remembered. The girl squeezed his hand. Jason, are you okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna do that voice. She wore faded jeans, hiking boots, and a fleece snowboarding jacket. Ah. Her chocolate brown hair was cut choppy and uneven, with thin strands braided down the sides. She wore no makeup like she was trying not to draw attention to herself, but it didn't work. She was seriously pretty. Her eyes seemed to change color like a kaleidoscope. Brown, blue, and green. Jason let go of her hand. Uh, I don't. At the front of the bus, a teacher shouted, All right, cupcakes, listen up! I'm gonna give this guy Undine's voice. The guy was obviously a coach. His baseball cap was pulled low over his head so you could just see his beady eyes. He had a wispy goatee and a sour face, like he'd just eaten something moldy. <laughs> his buff arms and chest pushed against a bright orange polo shirt. His nylon workout pants and Nikes were spotless white. A whistle hung from his neck, and a megaphone was clipped to his belt. He would have looked pretty scary if he hadn't been five feet zero. <laughs> mm. He stood up in the aisle. One of the students called... When he stood up in the aisle, one of the students called... Stand up, Coach Hedge! I heard that! The coach scanned the bus for the offender. Then his eyes fixed on Jason and his scowl deepened. A jolt went up Jason's spine and he was sure the coach knew he didn't belong here. He was going to call Jason out, the man to know what he was doing on that bus, and Jason wouldn't have a clue what to say. But Coach Hedge looked away and cleared his throat. We'll arrive in a few minutes. Stay with your partner. Don't lose your worksheet, and if any of you precious little cupcakes cause any trouble on the trip, I will personally send you back to campus the hard way. What a lovely guy. He picked up a baseball bat and made like he was hitting a home a, a home 
home run. I don't understand human sport language. Jason looked at the girl next to him. Guinea doctor was that way? She shrugged. Always does. This is the wilderness school where kids are the animals. She said it like it was a joke they'd shared before. This has to be some sort of mistake, Jason said. I'm not supposed to be here. The boy in front of him turned and laughed. Yeah, right, Jason. We're all, we've all been framed. I didn't run away six times. Piper didn't steal a BMW. The girl blushed. I didn't steal a car, Leo. Oh, I forgot, Piper. What was your story? You talked the dealer into lending it to you? He raised his eyebrow at Jason, like, can you believe her? Lena looked like a... <laughs> Straight face for the kid, straight face for the kid. I'm, I, I'm just trying to make a good time story. Leo looked like a Latino Santa's elf. With curly black hair, pointy ears, a cheerful babyish face, and a mischievous smile that told you right away this guy what should not be trusted around matches or sharp objects. Oh, great. His long, nimble fingers wouldn't stop moving, drumming on the seat, sweeping his hair behind his ears, fiddling with the buttons of his army fa fatigue jacket. Either the kid was naturally hyper, or he was hopped up on enough sugar and caffeine to give a heart attack to a water buffalo. Anyway, Leo said, I hope you've got our, your worksheet, because I used mine for spitwads days ago. Why are you looking at me like that? Someone draw my face... Again, I don't know you, Jason said. How long is this chapter? Leo gave him a crocodile grin. Sure, I'm not your best friend. I'm his evil clone. Leo Valdez! <laughs> Coach Hedge yelled from his seat. Brought him back there! Leo winked at Jason. Watch this. He turned to the front. Sorry, Coach. I was having trouble hearing you. Could you use a megaphone, please? Coach Hedge grunted like he was pleased to have an excuse. He unclipped the megaphone from his belt and continued giving directions, but his voice sounded came out like Darth Vader's. The kids cracked up. The coach tried again, but this time the megaphone blared, The cow says moo! <laughs> what the hell is- Where did you find this- <laughs> <sighs> the kids howled and the coach slammed down the megaphone. Valdez! Piper stifled a laugh. My god, Leo, how did you do that? Leo slipped a tiny Phillips head screwdriver from his sleeve. I'm a special boy. Guys, seriously, Jason pleaded. What am I doing here? What are we- where are we going? Piper knit her eyebrows. Jason, are you joking? No, I have no idea. Ah, yeah, he's joking, Leo said. He's trying to get me back for that shaving cream on the jello thing, aren't you? Jason stated him blankly. No, I think he's serious. Piper tried to take his hand again, but he pulled, a but he pulled it away. I'm sorry, he said. I don't, I can't. That's it, Coach Hedge yelled from the front. This back row would just volunteered to clean up after lunch. The rest of the kids cheered. That's a shocker, Leo muttered. But Piper kept her eyes on Jason, like she couldn't decide whether to be hurt or worried. Did you hit your head or something? You really don't know who we are? Jason shrugged helplessly. It's worse than that. I don't know who I am. Who would, son? How long is this chapter? Hold on, kid. Let me check and I'll keep reading. I'm gonna keep reading, don't you worry. 17 pages. We're on page 7 right now. Reasonable enough, okay. The bus dropped them in the front of a big red stucco complex like a museum, just sitting in the middle of nowhere. Maybe that's what it was, the National Museum of Nowhere, Jason thought. A cold wind blew across the desert. Jason hadn't paid much attention to what he was wearing, but it wasn't nearly warm enough. Jeans and sneakers, a purple t-shirt, and a thin black windbreaker. So a crash course for the amnesiac, Leo said. A helpful tone that made 
in a helpful tone that made Jason think this was not going to be helpful. We go to the wilderness school. Leo made big air quotes with his fingers. Which means with the bad kids. Your family, or the court, or whoever, decided you were too much trouble. So they shipped you off to this lovely prison. <laughs> Sorry. Boarding school. In armpit, Nevada. Where you learn valuable nature skills like running ten miles a day through the cacti and wearing and weaving daisies into hats. And for a special treat, we go on educational field trips with Coach Hedge, who keeps order with a baseball bat. Is it all coming back to you now? No. Jason glanced apprehensively at the other kids. Maybe 20 guys, half that many girls. None of them look like hard criminals. But he wondered... Bones are not good for turning pages. Come on. They all wondered what they'd done to get them sent to a school for delinquents. And he wondered why he belonged with them. Leo rolled his eyes. You're really gonna play this out, huh? Okay. So the three of us started here together this semester. We're totally tight. You know everything I say and, and, and I not, you give me your dessert and do my chores. Leo! Piper snapped. Fine, ignore that last part. But we are friends. Well, Piper's a little more than your friend in the last few weeks. Leo, stop it! Why don't I just go British? I don't know. Piper's face turned red. Jason could feel his face burning too. I thought he'd remember. Chara and Tori all make a noise again. I thought he'd remember if he'd been going out with a girl like Piper. He's got amnesia or something, Piper said. We've got to tell somebody. Leo scoffed. Who? Coach Hedge? He tried to fix Jason by whacking him upside the head. The coach. The coach was at the front of the group, barking orders and blowing his whistle to keep the kids in line. But every so often, he glanced back at Jason and scowled. Leo, Jason needs help, Piper insisted. He's got a concussion or... Yo, Piper! I can already tell this guy's gonna be a dick. What? I didn't say anything. <clears throat> one, of the guy, one of the other guys dropped back to join them as the group was heading into the museum. The new guy wedged himself between Jason and Piper and knocked Leo down. Don't talk to these bottom feeders. You're my partner, remember? The new guy had a dark black haircut, Superman style. A lead tan and teeth so white they should have come with a warning label. You will not stare directly at teeth. Permanent blindness may occur. <laughs> nice. He wore a Dallas Cowboys jersey, western jeans and boots, and he smiled like it was God's gift to juvenile delinquent girls everywhere. Jason hated him immediately. Pfft, I hate him too. Go away, Dylan, Piper grumbled. I didn't ask to work with you. Uh, that's no way to be. This is your lucky day. I'm gonna make this guy sound drunk. Dylan hooked his arm through hers and dragged her through the museum entrance. Piper shot one last look over her shoulder, like, 911. Leo got up and brushed himself off. I hate that guy. He offered Jason his arm, like they should go skipping inside together. I'm Dylan. I'm so cool. I wanted to date myself, but I can't figure out how. You want to date me instead? You're so lucky. Leo, Jason said, you're weird. Yeah, you told me that a lot. Leo grinned. Or if you don't remember me, that means I can use all my old jokes. Come on. Jason figured that this was that if this was his best friend, his life must have been pretty messed up. <laughs> Ouch. But he followed Leo into the museum. They walked through the building, stopping here and there for Coach he for Coach Hedge to lecture them with his megaphone, which alternately made him sound like the Sith Lord or Blair out random comments like the pig says link Leo kept pulling out nuts bolts and pipe cleaners from his from the pockets of his army jacket and putting them together like he had to keep his hands busy at all times Jason was too distracted to pay much attention to the exhibits but there 
But they were about the Grand Canyon and the Hula a tribe I can't pronounce, which owned the museum. Some girls kept looking over at Piper and Dylan and snickering. Jason figured these girls were the popular clique. They wore matching jeans and pink tops and enough makeup for a Halloween party. One of them said, Hey Piper, does your tribe run this place? Do you get in feet if you do the rain dance? Oh god, they're racist. The other girls laughed. Even Piper's so-called partner Dylan suppressed a smile. Piper's snowboarding jacket sleeves hid her hands, but Jason got the feeling she was clenching her fists. My dad's Cherokee, she said. Not, I can't pronounce this word. Of course, you'd need a few brain cells to know the difference, Isabel. <laughs> Oof. Isabel widened her eyes in mock surprise, so that she looked like an owl <laughs> with a makeup addiction. Oh, sorry. Was your mom in this tribe? Oh, that's right. You never knew your mom. God, I hate teenagers. Piper charged at her. Before a fight could start, Coach Hedge barked, Enough back there! Set a good example or I'll break out my baseball bat! The rope shuffled on to the next exhibit, but the girls kept calling out little pop, little comments to Piper. Good to be back on the res, when asked in a sweet voice. Dad's probably too drunk to work, another said with fake sympathy. That's why she turned I don't want, I don't know if this was offensive or not. I don't know human slang. Piper ignored them, but Jason was ready to punch them himself. He not, might not remember Piper, or even who he was, but he knew he hated mean kids. Leo caught his arm. Be cool. Piper doesn't like us fighting her battles. Besides, if the ghosts find out the truth about her dad, they'd all be bowing down to her and screaming, We're not worthy. Why? What about her dad? Leo laughed in disbelief. You're not kidding. You really don't remember your girlfriend's dad? Look, I wish I did, but I don't remember her, much less her dad. Leo whistled. <laughs> I can't whistle. I don't got no... No tongue, literally. Whatever. We have to talk when we get back to the dorm. Chara, if you're not going to over in the kitchen again, I'm going to come out there and I'm going to make you sleep outside. <sighs> Sorry about that, kid. <clears throat> they reached the far end of the exhibit hall, where some big glass doors led out to a terrace. All right, cupcakes, Coach Edge announced. You are about to see the Grand Canyon. Try not to break it. <laughs> the Skywalk can hold the weight of 70 jumbo jets. See you further away, it should be safe out, the, out there. If possible, try to avoid pushing each other over the ledge, as that would cause me extra paperwork. <laughs> God, this guy is just like Undyne. The coach opened the doors, and they all stepped outside. Grand Canyon spread out before them, live and in person. Extending over the ledge was a horseshoe-shaped walkway made of glass. You could see right through it. Man, Leo said, that's pretty wicked. <clears throat> Jason had to agree. Despite his amnesia and his feeling that he didn't belong there, he couldn't help but be impressed. <laughs> The canyon was bigger and wider than you could appreciate from a picture, and they were so high up that birds circled below their feet. 500 feet down, a river snaked the canyon's floor. Banks of storm clouds had moved overhead while they'd been inside, casting shadows like angry faces across the cliffs. As soon as Jason could see in any direction, Red and gray ravines cut through the desert like some crazy god had taken a knife into it. Jason got a piercing pain behind his eyes. Crazy gods? Where did he come up with that idea? He felt like he'd gotten close to something important. Someone he should know about. He also got the unmistakable feeling he was in danger. 
You all right? Leo asked. You're not going to throw up over the side, are you? Because I would have brought a camera. Jason grabbed the railing. He was shivering and sweaty, but it had nothing to do with the heights. He blinked, and the pain behind his eyes subsided. I'm fine, he managed. Just a headache. Thunder rumbled overhead. A cold wind almost knocked him sideways. This can't be safe, Leo squinted at the clouds. Storm's right over us, but it's clear all the way around. Wait, huh? Jason looked up and saw that Leo was right. The dark circle of clouds had parked itself over the skywalk, but the rest of the sky in every direction was perfectly clear. Jason had a bad feeling about that. All right, cupcakes, Coach Hedge yelled. He frowned at the storm like it bothered him too. We have to cut this short, so get to work. Remember, complete sentences. The storm rumbled. Jason's head began to hurt again. Not knowing why he did it, he reached into his jeans and brought out a coin. A circle of gold the size of a half dollar, but thicker and more uneven. Stamped on the side was a picture of a battle axe, and the other was some guy's face wreathed in laurels. Inscription read, read something like, I... I-V-L-I-V-S. That's probably Latin. Dang, is that gold? Leo asked. You've been holding out on me. Jason put the coin away, wondering why he'd come to ha wondering how he'd come to have it, and why he had the feeling he was going to need it soon. It's nothing, he said. Just a coin. Leo shrugged. Maybe his mind had to keep moving as much as his hands. Come on, he said. Dare you to spit over the edge. They didn't try very hard on the worksheet. For one thing, Jason was too distracted by the storm and his own mixed up feelings. For another thing, he didn't have any idea how to name three sedimentary strata you observe or describe two examples of erosion. God, science homework can be so boring sometimes. Leo was no help. He was too busy building a helicopter out of pipe cleaners. <clears throat> Check it out! He launched the copter. Jason figured it would plummet, but the pipe cleaner blades actually began to spun. Spin. Yeah. <clears throat> The little copter made it halfway across the canyon before it lost momentum and spiraled into the void. How'd you do that? Jason asked. Leo shrugged. Would have been cooler if I'd had some rubber bands. Seriously? Jason said. Are we friends? Last I checked. You sure? What was the first day we met? What did we talk about? It was... Leo frowned. I don't recall exactly. I'm ADHD, man. You can't expect me to remember details. But you don't remember at all. Wait, yeah, I swear, I can read. But I don't remember you at all. I don't remember anyone here. What if... You're right and everyone else is wrong? Leo asked. You think we just appeared here this morning and we've all got fake memories of you? A little voice in Jason's head said, that's exactly what I think. But it sounded crazy. Everyone here took him for granted. Everyone acted like he was a normal part of the class. Except for Coach Hedge. Take the word sheet. Leo hand <sighs> Jason handed Leo the paper. I'll be right back. Before Leo could protest, Jason headed across the skywalk. The school group had placed them. The school group had the place for, to themselves. Maybe it was too early in the day for tourists, or maybe the weird weather had scared them off. The wilderness school kids had spread out in pairs across the skywalk. Most were joking around and talking. Some of the guys were dropping pennies over the side. But fifty feet away, Pepper was trying to fill out her worksheet. But a stupid partner Dylan was hitting on her, putting his hand on her shoulder and giving her that blinding white smile. She kept pushing him away, and when she saw Jason, she gave him a look like, Throw out the sky for me! Jason motioned for her to hang on. He walked up to Coach Hedge, who was leaning on his baseball bat, studying the storm clouds. Did you do this? The coach asked them. The coach asked them. Jason took a step back. Do what? 
It sounded like the coach just asked him if he'd made the thunderstorm. Coach Hedge glared at him, his beady little eyes glinting under the brim of his hat. Don't play games with me, kid. What are you doing here? And why are you messing with my job? You mean, you don't know me? Jason said, I'm not one of your students? He just snorted. <sighs> Never seen you before today. Jason was so relieved he almost wanted to cry. At least he wasn't going insane. He was in the wrong place. Look, sir, I don't know how I got here. I just woke up on the school bus. All I know is I'm not supposed to be here. You got that right. Hedda's gruff voice dropped to a murmur, like he was sharing a secret. You got a powerful way with the mist, kid. You can make all these people think they know you. But you can't fool me. I've been smelling monster for days now. If I knew it, we had an infiltrator. I knew we had an infiltrator, but you don't smell like a monster. No oh, greater monsters, bad guys in this world. Not surprising, it's human fiction. You smell like a half-blood. So what are you? And where'd you come from? Most of what the coach said didn't make sense, but Jason decided to answer honestly. I don't know who I am. I don't have any memories. You've got to help me. Coach Hedge studied his face like he was trying to read Jason's thoughts. Great, Hedge muttered. You're being truthful. Of course I am. And what is all this about monsters and half-bloods? Are those cold woods or something? Hedge narrowed his eyes. Part of Jason wondered if the guy was just nuts, but the other part knew better. Look, kid, Hedge said. I don't know who you are. I just know what you are. And it means trouble. Now I gotta protect the three of you rather than just two of you. Are you a special package? Is that it? What are you talking about? Hedge looked out at the storm. The clouds were getting thicker and darker, hovering right over the, side, the skywalk. This morning, Hedge said, I got a message from camp. They said an extraction team is on the way. They're coming to pick up a special package. They wouldn't give me the details. I thought to myself, fine. The two I'm watching are pretty powerful, older than most. I know they're being stalked. I can smell a monster in the group. I figure that's why this camp is suddenly frantic to pick them up. But then you pop up out of nowhere. So, are you the special package? The pain behind Jason's eyes got worse than ever. Half-bloods, camp, monsters... He didn't know what Coach Hedge was talking about, but the words gave him a massive brain freeze, like his mind was trying to access information that should have been there but wasn't. He stumbled, and Coach Hedge caught him. For a short guy, the coach had hands like steel. Whoa there, Cupcake. You said you got no memories, huh? Fine. I'll just have to watch you too until the team gets here. I'll let the director figure things out. What director? Jason said. What camp? Just sit tight. Reinforcements should be here soon. Hopefully nothing happens before. Layton crack crackled overhead. The wind picked up with a vengeance. Worksheets flew into the Grand Canyon and the entire bridge shuddered. Kids screamed, stumbling and grabbing the rails. I had to say something. Hedge grumbled. He bellowed into the megaphone. Inside, everyone, the cow goes moo off the skywalk. I thought you said that this thing was stable, Jason shouted over the wind. Under normal circumstances, Coach Hedge agreed, which these aren't. Come on. And that is the end of chapter one. And it's late and you should be going to sleep. So if you're a good little kid, tomorrow I'll read you chapter 2 for a bedtime story. How's that sound? <laughs> Alright. <sighs> Have a good day, Kale. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, probably later in the morning. You know how I am with my beauty sleep. <laughs> <sighs> Good night, kiddo.